Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Second Tottenham. My name is Ben. This is Lenny And full time result Arsenal 3, Tottenham 1. I have to remember what the score line was then. We're going to get into it. I've got notes, as you guys know, how we run on this channel. I've got notes, but I have got a hell of a rant as well to come. So, um, to be honest, I don't really see the point of really going off the notes because it, it, it's pretty much my rant just wrote down, basically. Um, you know how we go in this channel. You know how we, you know how we do it. You know that we, we analyse things like goals and incidents and things. And then we, you know, then we kind of review it all. Hey, do you know what? I'm not even bothered about any of that because I, I've got more to say about my team than just the match. Really, how the match played out um, in in general. I don't want to focus too much on on that because I need to rant about spurs and stuff um so let's just get on with it really quickly so yeah three one full-time result uh terrible performance terrible terrible improvement in the second half but if they'd not come out of the tunnel that would have been an improvement in the second half because you know they're they absolutely woeful absolutely woeful um yeah arsenal very good i don't want to take anything away from them either um you know, Arsenal were exceptional today. They 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 were brilliant. They played fantastic. Um, very threatening on the counter attack. Not really the Arsenal that we've been seeing all season. Really, you know, the the Arsenal that a lot of people have seen is probably not too dissimilar from Spurs. Really, you know, very lacklustre performances. Um, you know, scraping one nils as well, isn't it? And and you know, probably a lot of similarities between the two teams. Um, Except from today, but yeah, um, just want to get that out of the way as well before we get into it because I, I said I thought Arsenal were fantastic, they fully deserved the win. Um, probably opened themselves up to a bit of a nervy last sort of 10 minutes with, with Spurs getting their goal back. Um, and, and and you know, Ramsdale making a very good save as well, right? At, um, in, in injury time to stop it from going 3 2, could have then very well been a very nervy last couple of minutes, but. Don't want to take anything away. Arsenal fully deserved the win. Don't like saying it, but you do. So there we go. Rant time. What honestly, honestly, what what was that? What was that? What was it? What happened? What what did I just watch? It was absolutely terrible. And you guys know, if you watch my channels, you've seen my videos about North London derbies before. You've seen them. You know that I said. And I, to be honest, this goes. This isn't just for any North London derby. This is for any match. But obviously, it changes. It changes for derby matches. Be it Chelsea, be it Arsenal, West Ham, whoever. You know, the the, the premise is still the same. But I, I understand that the matches they have different sort of auras about them for for derby matches. Of course, they do. Form goes out the window. Of course, it does. Because there's more to it. And you guys know, if you've watched my channel, you will know that I've always said, as long as that team goes out there and gives 110%, even if they come away and lose, I can still say, look, better team won, you know, but you gave it everything. And that's what I can say, you gave it everything. And I think in North London derbies in particular, we can go on about London derbies, but North London derbies in particular, this means something. This badge means something. The, the Arsenal badge to those fans means something. It's all about that, and and when you don't give everything, when you don't show passion, when you don't show anything, like you you're even a you like you even trained together, like you've even played together. That's when fans get annoyed. That's when fans start to get annoyed with the management style, with with the playing playing style, with everything. And and what we saw in that first half was nothing short of absolutely abysmal shambolic terrible whatever word you want to use about it crap it was just it's just rubbish and it, yeah I, the attitude the, where was the attitude where's the passion this is a north london derby where's the passion like really where where is it and, and you see in performances individual performances and I and I look at this and I, and I compare it because I feel like you have to because you've seen the team at well again like I said what are we six games and I can't remember you've seen the team at, perform at their best against Man City 
I don't think any of us will lie when we said that the best performance of the season so far was the Man City game. And you go back in that, that video, you'll see probably the opposite of what I am now, which is a very jubilant person. Um, saying about how well the team played together. And they played together. That was the point. They played together. There was, And, and granted, yes, there was no Kane in that match. You had Sonny sitting up from Bergvine and Lucas working hard on the wings. Delhi absolute workhorse in midfield. Hoybier and Skip playing phenomenal. Tanganga was man of the match. You know, everyone played as a group and they were all playing for each other. And all of a sudden, within since then, and again, another three... Well, I know we got one back, but a three-goal defeat kind of... It's kind of gone, hasn't it? And And... You're looking at Kane. Let's let's talk about Harry Kane. Harry Kane, I've very much given the benefit of the doubt over the last couple of weeks because I, I do think it, it's a lack of match fitness. It's a lack of, you know, just plain regular. But those are starting to go. Those reasons started to go because he is playing regularly. He is, you know, getting minutes under his belt. We could use that excuse after two games that he'd played. But he's been playing in, in Europe. Europe, yeah, I can't talk. European games, you know, he's playing regularly now. He's starting every single week. And what are we seeing? Lacklustre performance. Um, general looking of not in no interest. Um, someone who he took a shot from thirty yards in the first half, and it skied over. And I'm just and just a general look of disinterest in his performance, which is not what he shows. It's not what Harry Kane's about. Usually, you know, he's, you know, he last season when Spurs played bad, he was still the person who shone. And we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. I'm seeing a player who's a shadow of him for myself at the minute, because I know how much football can just change like that. And if he scores two goals um, in like two or three, four consecutive games... All these comments will get forgotten and stuff because that's just how football works, isn't it? But what we're seeing right now, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. And I think what annoys me the most about Harry Kane's current form is you want to be the big player. You want to be the player that gets signed by Man City. You wanted the move to Man City and you want to be that player, as he has said in many interviews, to be considered with Cristiano Ronaldo, Robert Lewandowski, um, Lionel Messi, you know, you want to be considered against them. Guess what? Those players pull their teams through. Those players are always the players that in the dying embers of a game will still pull their team through. And what I saw from Harry Kane today and what I've seen from Harry Kane last couple of weeks, so far from that. And I, we don't know why fully. We don't know why the reason is that he's playing as crap as he is at the minute. But... Again, I've kind of questioned, like, do you drop him? Do you drop him based on form? You've got a striker who's not scoring. Do you drop him? Or do you go, well, no, because it's Harry Kane. You know, the Champions League final result. Um, the final match, you know, Lucas Moura scored a hat-trick. Harry Kane started over him. And, and that's kind of, you know, what do you do? Do you drop him? Do you not? I, I don't know. But it, it's pretty poor at the minute. And I've been ranting about Harry Kane for, like, most of the video so far. But, um, yeah, it, it's not good. Um, Delhi, poor game, absolutely terrible today. Didn't you know? Didn't show what he's been showing in the first couple of games of this season. Couple of games, three, four games, whatever. You know, working hard. You know, non-stop running, going from box to box. He wasn't doing any of that today. None of it. Sunny, apart from the goal, was really vacant today. You know, passes going, you know, to no one. Corners going to no one. Free kicks. It was a free kick. There was a chance to whip the free kick. Similar to the Watford game. Whip it in on that six-yard line. That's where that ball needs to go. Where does it go? Easy catch for Ramsdale up there. Nice and easy. Lucas, again, improved second half. Um, you know, went close with the deflected effort late on. But again, a lot of just nothing, really. <laughs> a bit of irony in that sentence. Um, Hoy I thought was... was absolutely awful today I don't know if people agree with that uh, I thought Hoybier was terrible today I thought every time he, he tried passing the ball gave it away um, the goal that Arsenal was it the second goal or not 
went down easy on a tackle. That's not what Hoy is about. He's the player. He doesn't go down like that. I know he's capable of a bit of like shit sort of stuff, but he's not. He's not the player who goes down after a tap or anything. It wasn't even a foul. Like I, I don't know. I just that wasn't. I don't know. I didn't like it. Dyer and Sanchez kind of reverted after a very strong season, might I add, reverted back to their, their Dyer and Sanchez from last season where um, they were getting face planted by Man City players into the grass pretty much. They they just looked like they weren't comfortable, didn't know what to do, where to go, who to look at, you know, where they were. Uh, end on Bele, um, you know, again, watch this channel, big End on Bele fan. Again, I have to say, you wanted the big move in the summer, you wanted to leave. And what are you showing? You know, it's great that you showed a flick against Ren in a, a couple of weeks ago, whatever. But it's like, what are you showing? We had a couple of flicks. We had a couple of tricks. We had a couple of dribbles. But for what? Because it did nothing. It did nothing. And it's like, then the tracking back and then, you know. But again, what am I seeing? What am I seeing from that? Not much. Not much. And that's kind of the, the running theme throughout the day. Region, oh my god, Region defensively again, um, slash defensively was up and down today. Some really good runs, some absolute crap runs, um, and it summed up. It, uh, I think he was running against Tommy Asu, who ironically had a great game after being in, you know, linked with us in the summer. Um, uh, he was running against Tommy Asu. His hand clips here, about here, I think it was, and just. Like that, and I'm just like, why? Just get up. It's it, we all know that it didn't catch you in the face or anything. Just get up. Don't do any of that. And I saw so much of that from Reggion last season. It really annoyed me. And I always highlighted it in videos about it because it did annoy me. I was like, just focus on getting back into the game, not trying to win a free kick because of your your antics trying to get a foul when it cl quite clearly wasn't a foul. It just that stuff annoys me. They look knackered. Nuno looked lost on the sideline as well. And I'm not, I do not get me wrong at all. I, this is not a Nuno out video or anything like that. Because I, I, I do believe in giving the manager time. You know, I, it's not a, it, there, trust me, there's going to be a lot of people calling for it after that. And, you know, absolutely entitled to their opinion. I'm just not one of those fans. I do believe that you've got to give a manager some time. Potch, when he started, had an awful run of results when he started. Like, really bad. And look, obviously, how that turned out. So, I'm not saying it will turn out like Potch or anything, but I'm not going to be calling for the manager's head after six or seven games. Come on. Um, but Nuno did look lost on that first half. He was stood there and the camera was looking at him and he looked just a bit like, don't know how to fix this. Don't know what to do. <laughs> These guys look like they're ready, for, like lambs for the slaughter almost. Um and they just, like I said, they look knackered. That like match fitness wise and stuff, they look knackered. They're not. They weren't chasing balls. They weren't doing. You know, you look at Arsenal. They ran for every ball. They, they you know, even if they didn't need to, they were running for it. Aubameyang was running for every ball. Gabriel as well was looking brilliant. You know, defensively running for everything. What were Spurs doing? I saw a load of blokes on the pitch just standing there waiting for something to happen very static body language looking defeated already well harry kane it's like it's the england captain like do you know what i mean like you you two nil down you've been sucker punched right you two nil down you're just supposed to be one of the leaders in the group one of the old like the older players in this group like he's 28 nearly 29 and he's like come on you know you should be leading the team. I know Hugo's the, the captain, but come on, grab them. You know, grab them, pick them up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to be the guy, one of these senior figures in the squad. Pick the younger players up. Step up. Hoy Bier as well, one of the leaders in the team. Eric Dyer, same for him. You step up and, and tell these guys, come on, gotta get a grip here. And they're just, you're looking at them, they're just like, don't know what to do sort of thing and that and that is infuriating but especially in the North London derby um the only positive that I can say is Brian Hill I thought he was brilliant when he came on I, I thought he, he he did the best he could with the crap situation that was presented in front of him um and he was the only shining light for me I thought mostly even the goal like it it, it wasn't you know I said to myself I was like right great goal but we're not going to do anything because we don't 
we don't exert the uh, the image of a team that will do anything. You know the 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 West Ham match last season where um last yeah last season where Spurs went three 0 up in the first half, and then um, West Ham came back and obviously got that last second uh, equaliser. You know the game was difficult three 0 down. Of course it is difficult. Spurs come out, they get an early goal. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. It's football. You never know. Spurs in that first half against West Ham looked like they were going to get 6 7 8 nil, And look how that turned out. It's, this is how it changes. And Spurs came out in the second half. Yes, improved. But nowhere, nowhere near a team looking like they were going to do anything to change that game. Like I said, improved. You don't have to do much. So, yeah, it, it absolute crap. Um, rubbish, whatever you want to call it. Um, well done to Arsenal because like I said I fully deserved it I do not want to take anything away from that at all um, but Spurs not to turn up in a, I know I know we don't win much at the Emirates anyway but you just want to show you just want to see a show of passion and, and stuff and, and to not see that and to not you know and, and see them capitulate how they did it's very worrying signs I don't like it you know we need to see a change that's nine goals shipped in the last three league games it's not good you know I <sighs> And seeing those stats, you know, the, the least amount of shots, the least amount of work rate. And I'm looking at the, the interviews that like Nuno did when he was appointed and stuff. And I saw those interviews and it was like, we're going to make you proud. We're going to work, we, you know, we're going to work hard. We, we have to be the best. We have to be the best uh, of what we are and things like that. And whatever we are, we have to be better than that and, and things like this. And I'm looking at that and I'm looking at this and I'm going, hmm. That's not really what I saw, and I've not been seeing for the last couple of weeks. So that obviously, obviously needs to be addressed. And I'm looking at Daniel Levy going this free flowing, fast attacking football thing that you promised when in the managerial search. Not seeing that much either. Just a bit worrying. I don't know, but yeah, need a response um, in the next game. Absolutely. I, I think we're in Europa League action. I can't remember this. Is it Thursday? I can't. Yeah, I think we're in Europa League action this week. But regardless, we need to see a response. Absolute need to see a response. I think it's uh, Villa next weekend. Ugh, yeah, and they just beat Man United, so they'll be up for it as well. Um, but Spurs, very poor. Um, deservedly named and shamed uh, as well. Um, embarrassing, really. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Well done to Arsenal. Fully deserved again. Spurs, absolutely shambolic. So I will see you guys in the next video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button, like, whatever. I don't really, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, come on, you Spurs.